Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, Everything Medicare Podcast Nation? This is Christian Brindle. Wherever you are and how you might be listening to me today, thank you so much for taking the time. And folks, it has been a while. We've been off for some time from this show, but we're back here today. Um, this is episode 266. I'm your host, Christian Brindle. If you are not familiar with me, I run an agency just outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, and we specialize in Medicare health plans. Um, And this is the number one Medicare show in the country right now, in my personal opinion. Um, We bring you information that nobody else is going to give you. We bring you a library of content to where anytime you have a question, you're going to be able to find an answer that's easy, that's easily explained, that's not overcomplicated, that's easily digestible. But most importantly, we try to keep it as interesting as it possibly can be. Today on this episode, what I wanted to kind of jump into, and kind of what I wanted to start with today, folks, is Medicare in 2022. The last time we brought an episode to you was November, right? Kind of closing out the annual election period, the Medicare open season, the open enrollment period. Um, and, and a lot of things has transpired since then. So I kind of wanted to dedicate this episode today to essentially carving out what we're looking at in 2022. Now, we didn't make get time to make an episode at the end of the year last year when they announced the new Medicare Part B premium increases, which came as a shock to everybody, by the way. So to kind of explain what I mean by this is, if, if you're just new to Medicare, there are two parts of Medicare that actually come from the government and everything else you get with Medicare kind of centers around these two parts of Medicare from the government. You have what's known as Medicare Part A and you also have what's known as Medicare Part B. Medicare Part A comes typically at no cost as long as you have worked in the country for at least 10 years of your life, right? 40 quarters. And essentially, that's what your FICA tax is paid for throughout your working life. Medicare Part B has a monthly premium that fluctuates from year to year. Now, I've run into a lot of people, a lot of time people that are on Medicare that are ha- that are paying their Medicare Part B premiums, especially when I, I see it a lot with folks that are 75, 80, 85. Maybe they've been on Medicare for a decade. Maybe they've been on it for two decades. And they'll be paying their Medicare Part B premium automatically month to month, being withheld from their Social Security check. And a lot of times they don't even realize they're paying it. And if they do realize they're paying it, they think they're paying like $105 a month because that's what it was when they started. They haven't been keep paying attention to the fact that it's been creeping up year after year after year. It's a set amount for every single person in the country, the Medicare Part B premium. There's there's exceptions to this, of course. Um, If you have a certain level of Medicaid, which is essentially Medicaid, is not the same as Medicare. Medicaid is essentially where you have assistance from your state government, and they're essentially helping you with costs, right? It's a low-income thing. Um, And if you have a certain level of Medicaid and assistance from Medicaid, a lot of times Medicaid can pay your Medicare Part B premium for you, so that way you might not be charged for it. And it might be more than the normal amount, if you fall into a high income demographic situation with something that's known as IRMA, income related monthly adjustment, IRMA, which I don't know. I mean, it really acts as a penalty for making too much money. If you had too high of an income in in terms of the threshold two years ago, um, because they always base it off of two years before, right? So in 2022, they're looking at your income in 2020. In 2023, they'll be looking at last year in 2021. And if you make too high of an income 
which, you know, I can go over the current numbers if you folks would like to see me make a updated episode on Irma where we essentially disclose and discuss what the updated Irma numbers are. Let me know. I'm happy to do that. But essentially, you know, if you're in a too high of an income bracket and, you know, it's like a, it's like, it's like 90 to 100 grand if you're a single individual and you file take your taxes individually and with no one else. Or if you're filing jointly with your spouse, it's probably 180, 190, something like that. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. But if you're over that threshold, they charge you more for Medicare Part B premium. But essentially last year, the Medicare Part B premium was $148.50 a month in 2021. Every single year in September, typically the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services put out what's known as um, look-aheads, right? They put out these look-aheads. They put out these projections as to what it's actually going to raise as, which to me is crazy because just tell people what you're going to raise it at. Why do you have to put out a projection? But they do anyway. And typically they'll put out these projections in September and then somewhere between the end of October to the end of November, they will put out the actual numbers and what they're going to be. And in my career, that's almost, it's almost, you know, been a decade since I got into the Medicare industry, folks. But in my career, I can't think of too many years where the projections were not very close to the actual numbers. The projections are usually a dollar, maybe $2 off of what they really are, right? So if they projected it to go up to a certain number, I believe the projection they put out was $158, I want to say, which was a pretty sizable increase when you think about it. 2020 was in the 144 range. 2021 was 148, so it was about a $4 increase. For it to go from 148.50 to 158 would be a $10 increase, which would be more substantial. But the actual number came out at the end of November and it ended up to be $170.10 a month. And people were shocked by it. People were floored by it. There was news of people's social security raising in January of 2022. All of a sudden, that increase cuts into the raise they would get on their social security checks. I didn't like it. You didn't like it. Nobody liked it. It was the highest Medicare Part B rate increase from one year to the next in decades, probably three decades or more. But what do you do about it? The government doesn't care what you think. The government doesn't care what I think. They're going to do what they want to do, regardless of what any of us thinks about it. Not that things couldn't be worse, right? We could be in a country that has far less freedoms than what we have here in America. So I'm not getting into anything like that, but it was just disconcerting to see how many people and of our own clients were impacted because at the end of the day here at our office at Christian Brunner Insurance Services, what we're thinking about is our clients. I would like for them all to pay nothing for Medicare Part B if I could. Nothing I can do about that, but I think you understand what I'm saying. But that was a big um, thing that we, we did not report because we ran out of time before the end of the year. Wanted to bring you that information. I'm sure a lot of you heard about it. And I wanted to share my thoughts on kind of the development of that Medicare Part B premium increase. Of course, you know, there's been some news of things kind of going on in the Medicare world. And I wanted to shift gears to this, um, essentially. Some news going on right now that has to do with the Medicare world. And it's kind of some interesting stuff that's going on. Um, the New York Daily actually put out an article on February 14th that was written by a Chris Sommerfeld that's titled, More Than 45,000 New York City Retirees Opt Out of City's New Medicare Plan Over Bait and Switch Concerns. <coughs> so the article starts off by saying, More than 45,000 retired workers have opted to keep their current Medicare coverage for a price instead of enrolling in a free, controversial new plan offered by Mayor Adams' administration, a situation one ex-city employee described as a effing outrage, I won't say the word, on Monday. The new Medicare Advantage plan, which was first rolled out by former Mayor Bill de, de Blasio, 
last September has for months been a source of anxiety for many of the city's 250,000 retired workers who fear it could dilute their benefits. While retirees are automatically enrolled in the new plan, the city allows those who want to opt out from it to keep their current Medicare coverage, but at a new $191 a month fee. So this is kind of interesting. Despite the financial penalty of 45,646 retirees have declined the Medicare Advantage plan in order to maintain their current benefits, according to data provided to the Daily News by City Hall. The data shows that the rate of opt-out filings picked up significantly after February 6, the day Adams announced he would move ahead with implementing de Blasio's Advantage plan despite growing concerns from retirees. In five days after Adams' announcement, 3,100 retirees submitted opt-out requests with 925 filings on February 9th alone, the data shows. Hundreds of angry retirees gathered outside City Hall on Monday morning to protest Adams' embrace of the Advantage plan and urged him to shift course before April 1st when the program officially takes effect. Many retirees at the demonstration who spoke with the news said that they had already opted out or would be doing so in the upcoming weeks if Adam does not have a change of heart, if Adams doesn't have a change of heart. So, the article continues to say, the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees of Group and Ex-Cops, Firefighters, and other uh, municipal workers have brought a lawsuit in Manhattan Supreme Court over the issue, mostly focusing on the city's budgeted rollout of the new plan. A lawyer for the group has said his client is likely to eventually ask a judge to rescind the plan itself, arguing it violates long-standing city contracts. A retired teacher later said on Monday's rally that she hopes the organization promptly escalates its court action. If Mayor Adams doesn't do the right thing, we will get the right result in court, she said. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, I think any time you see a retirement program that's embracing a type of Medicare Advantage plan, and it sounds like in this situation, it, it's not a type of Medicare Advantage plan that people would typically like, right? It doesn't seem like it's a regular type of Medicare Advantage plan, um, but it almost looks like it's almost like something you have to take. Whereas from my understanding in the past, Maybe the retirement plan was offered as a Medicare supplement plan as a secondary to Medicare instead of a Medicare Advantage plan that would essentially replace Medicare. Now, now I'm, a, I'm actually an advocate for Medicare Advantage. I don't have anything wrong with Medicare Advantage. I think it has its place. But to force people to take their retirement benefits to take that kind of plan, I can understand why people might be upset. Because if you have to pay for it any, either way, which was what it sounds like, I think I'd rather have a, a, a secondary to Medicare as well if all things were equal. The, 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 the reasoning behind Medicare Advantage is because it's usually no premium or much cheaper compared to a Medicare supplement plan. So that was kind of some interesting news and developments of kind of what was going on. Um, I think what's important to keep in mind, folks, in 2022 that we're seeing a lot of and we talked about this last year in 2021, but essentially what we're looking at is there's a lot of advertising going on that's fraudulent and misleading. On the TV, public forums, social media, direct mail, stating that you can get things like food cards, celebrities reading off of them, everything like that. They're advertising benefits that aren't available in your state, no matter who you are. Or you might have to qualify for Medicare and Medicaid. We've talked about this plenty of times before, and I'm not going to get into it too much today. But one thing I found that's interesting is at the beginning of October, Medicare, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services put out a statement saying they were going to crack down on these organizations. I haven't heard of, I haven't heard of any crackdown. And have I seen any change? No. Fraudulent and misleading advertising and, and commercials and you know advertising benefits that you have not a prayer of getting 
and it's not even offered in your state is wrong. It's misleading and it's predatory and preying on a group of individuals in seniors that are vulnerable. And I think it should stop. But I think one thing that's important to talk about with this is it didn't, it didn't have the crackdown that a lot of us thought it would because they put that announcement out the first week of October. We're now in the end of February as I, re as I record this to you in 2022, and I'm still seeing the same advertisements and the same kind of things taking place on a regular basis. We'll see what, we'll see what happens with it, but I think one thing that we need to keep in mind is you have to start to wonder at some point if certain organizations that are making so much money from these fraudulent claims are writing checks to certain individuals to get away with it. You have, you have to start to ask that question. Anyway, folks, um, I just wanted to bring you an episode, update you, make sure that we continue to provide you content. We will try to be more active with the show and bring you new episodes as we can. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it kind of brought you some insight and in kind of what things are looking like. Not a lot's changed. Still Medicare Advantage, still Medicare Supplements. That is the biggest choice you need to make when you're turning 65, one or the other. I think if you can figure out which one of those two best fits your needs when you are turning 65, which a majority of our audience is people that are aging in and turning 65, I think that's probably 80% of your difficulty right there. Um, we will try to do a new episode relatively soon for you. Um, and... Of course, you know, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave us a five-star review if you're listening to us on a platform that allows you to do so. And let us know kind of what topics and questions you'd like to see us answer on the, on the show. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, everybody. We appreciate you, and um, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.